Brian Pate here. Let's take a look at the track tile on our Capto unit. So I have the unit turned on, it's connected, ready to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a baseline stroke on here so we could look at it and discuss it. And what I have is I have the golfer's toolbox laid out right here just to give me some visual and awareness of, I wanna try to keep the shaft arcing on the same plane Trying to keep it the same distance back and through just so we can keep our stroke roughly the same and as me being a human it might change around a little bit because i'm not a perfect robot but as we look at this path right here a couple things we have to take a note one is where was my face at setup so if i look at the face tile it says it's plus 0 0.3 open so very neutral in that one right there because the track, a lot of it's based off of where this putter was aimed at setup. So if it was aimed pretty straight and I rolled it down the yardstick, I know the path is probably gonna be pretty rep representation of what happened in the stroke. So as we're looking here at the track, and remember the track's calculated a little bit before impact and a little bit after impact. As we're looking at the graph, the yellow is gonna be the backstroke the orange is gonna be the through stroke. So the yellow is going back and you can see it kind of moved inwards, just a hair from that zero line. And if I turn on the track, remember the track is, if I had a laser pointing out the shaft, where was that laser pointing on the ground? It actually pointed a little bit inwards, which I actually felt the putter move slightly in. So I just arced it a little bit in on the backswing and it came roughly on the same direction through. So at impact, kind of relative to where the face started, around impact, that face was traveling about two degrees in to out. Now, if we're looking at the lines that are lined up and down, we can turn those off and on. The green is gonna be a face that's kind of square to the arc. Let's roll a couple more and see if we can get some different visuals on here in different face representations. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to make the same stroke. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the face open, say five degrees, but I'm still gonna try to keep my putter arcing on the golfer's toolbox. So there's a ball that definitely started to the right. So the face was open on that one. And if I go back to the face tile, it's 0 0.5 degrees open. So from where I started and where I returned, there wasn't much change in that difference. Now, if I look at the track, as we start seeing red in the stroke, that's gonna be a putter face that's open to the path where it's going. And as we're looking at this graph right here, now the track is traveling left. So if my face was aimed to the right, and I let the putter swing on its natural arc, trying to stay the same distance from the golfer's toolbox. So my shaft was trying to stay on the same plane as the one before. You can see that that path now is reading left, minus 1.5 degrees, because when the putter is slightly open, let's look at it this way up in front of me, if I was just moving the shaft on one plane, and here's my iPad, so here's the plane it's moving on, there's the first stroke what happened. So relative to where the face was aimed at setup, this is what the path was doing. The second one, uh, we just hit right here, the face is open, but I kept the shaft still moving on the same plane. And now it's gonna read, because the face was pointing to the right, that the arc was moving to the left of the face. That's why that's reading as minus 1.5. So let's do the opposite now. So remember on our arc, the green is gonna be a face that's square. Red's gonna be a face that's open to the arc. So on this one, we're gonna aim it to the left. Decent amount. We're gonna go ahead and make a stroke. And you can see the ball started to the left from down the line camera right there. And if I go back to the face, the face says it's plus 0 0.8 open. So it just slightly opened from the setup to impact just a little bit. But now as we look at the track, 
or sorry, let's look at the path first. The path now is reading positive 4.8. So relative to roughly where this was aimed, as the putter was swinging back and through, the putter aim was left of where the shaft was moving on its little plane. So there's one where it's positive 4.8 into out, just based off of where that face was aimed at setup. Let's hit another one here. And as we're looking at that one, you can see the lines, the face lines are blue, which means the face was closed to the arc. If I turn on the track, and I'm gonna to try to keep my shaft moving on the same plane that it's been moving on in these The track, just like so my open. normal baseline stroke, has a little arc to it, just because when I close it down, I don't move the, the putter stroke. in the straight plane, on the shaft plane, I have a little bit of an arc inwards. You can still see that that's showing up on this example. So let's roll one more here. Take a look. I'm gonna start with my putter face open. I'm gonna to try to return it back to square. So as we're looking at the graph, it's saying that the path was minus 0.5 to the left, but my face started aimed out to the right. Now, if I look at the face, the face says it closed about four degrees relative to where it's set up, but that ball started down our yardstick there. So I know the face at impact was pretty straight, but because the face is opening or was already open and it was closing in the downstroke, that shifted the path slightly to the left. My natural path is slightly in to out, but you can see relative to where this started, even though I made the same little stroke and closed it down, it still projected the path based off of where the face was aimed. Let's try that. Same little demonstration here going from a slightly closed face to try to get it to roll down the yardstick. So on this one, as we're looking at it, I'm gonna click back to the face tile. It says it was open four degrees. So from where I started to impact, it opened four degrees, but it started down the yardstick. So I know that impact is pretty square to my target out there. Now, as I look at the track, the track's gonna say it's 3.1 into out due to my face aiming a little bit to the left. And then as I came back through, even though I squared the face up, the zero, the aim was still aimed slightly to the left. Now there's more that's going into this because it's not a one-to-one -one ratio because as we click on this little putter on the top left, sorry, on the middle left with a ball in the way, it's gonna give us kind of a 3D representation. So we got to think about the path of, this is a 3D motion in space, what the putter's doing, but it's projected down onto the ground. It's like if I had this putter sitting up on the toolbox right here, and I was shining a line or a light right down the shaft, that's kind of putting a shape onto the ground, and that's kind of what this is representing. So if we, know our aim is pretty straight and we're returning it pretty neutral, that path's gonna be reflecting what the putter did in space. Now there's another video on this whole path and arc talking about the dimensions and what's going on in here. But as you're reading the information, first we gotta know is where this putter is aimed at setup. As we're making that stroke, the putter's gonna return somewhere. And if I look at that last one right there, there's a track that's still slightly end out back to my normal motions. And if I look at the track, the track from behind was still kind of following this golfer's toolbox. So we can have the shaft still pointing at our target line, but we can have the club head moving inside that line, we can also have the club head moving outside that laser line. So you gotta think of the putter moving in three dimensions in space, and this is getting projected onto a 2D surface with our feedback, and the face at setup and the aim has a bearing of where the path's gonna be shifted around a little bit. 